What's up, nerds? Welcome to Nintendo Pal Block for the week of, I don't know, what's 5, 12, May 12th, 2017. <laughs> I'm one of your hosts, Corey Derrick, and alongside me, as always, the beautiful, beautiful man over there, Edward Barnell. Ed, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. I need Konami to do a remake of Castlevania 2, Summer's Quest, with new graphics. And I need it on the Nintendo Switch or 3DS slash 2DS XL. Get on that, Konami. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, like we said at the, end of the, <laughs> at the end of the episode last week, uh, we are recording two episodes in a row because I am currently enjoying my vacation. So I did this for you. You are welcome. <laughs> And I'm currently playing so, video games. So, yeah. I am also probably playing Mario Kart on a pool chair or it's, I don't know what we're doing yet. But uh, I don't know. You'll probably see a Facebook video of me at some point or Instagram video of me doing something really fun and stupid. So, uh, but we're going to skip the what we've been playing because. Uh, I don't know what to tell you, except it's probably been Mario Kart for me. And hopefully, and I'm hopefully probably about- Ed's beaten Zelda by now. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Oh, yeah. I, can I, can I, I quick, quick thing? Uh, I didn't say for the last episode, because I went crazy shopping at uh, for the go to sell on PSN. Um, I got a lot of uh, weird Japanese games. So do check out for <laughs> that later on in this month. It's going to be oh, very interesting. <laughs> Man, I don't even know what to do with you right now. Dude, I, uh, I, brought, I, I finally bought Iron Set sooner, but I haven't started it yet. So I can't wait to play that. Nice. Yes. Nice. Uh, and don't worry, everybody. Uh, I ended up with on, on Switch for that game. That that is if I buy nothing else besides Zelda and Mario Kart, I am said Suno would be the first game I buy. Yes. Yes. But yes, Corey. Uh let's continue on the show. I'm sorry. Oh no. That's what it's that's what the show's for, man. Uh so last week uh we got some listener questions through our Facebook group and, and Twitter and stuff. Uh, so this is going to be more of a listener questions episode. If you would like to uh, leave us some questions for future episodes, you can join our Facebook group or tweet them at one of us. Uh, but before we get into those, we had another bit of mo- news that we were saving for this episode. Uh, the 2007 World Video Game uh, Hall of Fame inducted a lot of a lot of Nintendo inspired games this this past week so uh there are a lot of other games besides nintendo stuff but uh let's just let's just go through the list real quick donkey kong uh halo combat evolved pokemon red and green which if you live in the u.s it's pokemon red and blue and street fighter 2 were all chosen uh over a list of impressive finalists to join the elite lineup uh due to their significant effects on their genres and the industry as a whole um, that's a pretty solid list of, of games right there. Yes. Uh, you know, I think all of these games have a rightful place on that list. Uh, and we're actually going to be playing Street Fighter 2 in a couple weeks, so I'm pretty excited for that. Yes. Somebody somebody made uh, Switch box arts for Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue as full on remakes for switch <laughs> and i was like yes this is all i want in life is a pokemon red and blue quit oh, oh. man gosh i just man i would even go as far as saying like i know this, this has nothing to do with video game hall of fame but like if they were to make a full on 3d uh pokemon game for switch and they were to capitalize off the power that was pokemon go last summer like red and blue 2 or red and blue remake would be the perfect game to make right now would game freak be, would game freak be ready to do that though or the pokemon Cup, I should say. why not i pay for it you pay for it yeah we'd I, all pay for it yeah 
it'll, it'll probably become one of the hardest games to find. But yeah, like people yeah. will. I mean, there'll be some people who will buy it digitally, but everybody's gonna be like, um, I I want the box art. I mm-hmm. I want both games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, these uh these games, uh, pretty solid list. Uh, the the World Video Game Hall of Fame is definitely something I think we're going to hear a lot more about in the coming years. It's uh, it's it's pretty cool that uh, games are finally getting that recognition for for doing something great for an industry that's still significantly younger than a lot of other media and and you know definitely a lot younger than than sports and movies and TV. So. Yeah. It's really cool. It's really cool to see these games get recognition. You know, last yes. year it was, I think last year it was Super Mario Brothers and Tetris and uh, what was the other big one last year? I think it might have been like World of Warcraft or something. Warcraft, some sort of Warcraft game. Uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely significant entries this year. Very happy to say that most of them are Nintendo titles. Yes. Really happy. Yes. I mean, you can say Street Fighter 2 was a arcade game, but come on. Who wasn't it, playing it on Super Nintendo? Right. <laughs> like that that the game, game the game that the game that killed the arcade, Street Fighter 2. No. It on our it, to, they they brought it home. They brought it home to Super Nintendo. Yeah, because uh, Champion Edition was out, and Turbo and the hack versions of them were out. So you was getting the slow paced version. Yeah. You wasn't getting the updated new graphic style version. You know that, like that was that was the way that you would learn on how to play a fighting game. You were you would get hooked with the uh, with the arcade, bring it home. To better up your skill and then take your skill back to the arcade. Mm-hmm. So they worked. They worked hand in hand. So yeah. Um, yeah. So World Video Game Hall of Fame inductees. Definitely. Congrats, congrats to all the congrats to all the entries and uh, definitely enjoyed my time with all of those games. So, mm-hmm. but we are going to now enter the scary scary world of <laughs> listener questions do 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 oh man so you have the ones from the facebook group proper correct um yes and then i also asked on my pa- personal facebook page so i have those ones open so um i guess i'll i'll go ahead and start a uh, friend of friend of show antonio guian asks I find playing in handheld slash using joy cons for extended periods of play. Very painful. I know some rich people have pro controllers and then he stares at us like we're like we're the monsters. Uh, But for everyone else of sober mind, would you agree that this is unacceptable and very, and every console should come with a comfortable controller? Um, I don't know. I haven't really had a hard time with the Joy Cons, uh, especially in handheld mode. Mm-hmm. Uh, at Mario Kart, it took some adjusting, uh, but in like after a couple extended periods with Mario Kart, I did feel my thumb kind of getting sore because it was more reaching behind its natural position. Uh, but other than that, like playing Shovel Knight in handheld mode, playing Mr. Shifty, even playing Zelda. I didn't really find myself really feeling it. And maybe it's because I'm playing a lot of games without camera control or needing to press A a whole lot. Where A is the accelerator. So like that's kind of where that cramping comes in, I guess, for my thumb. But I mean, with Zelda, like jump was B. So it was very natural to just rest my thumb on the B button. Right. And you know, attack was was why let's see why I guess so. Like maybe it's just because I haven't had a lot of experience with games that I needed to press the A button and the shoulder buttons until Mario Kart. Uh, 
But that said, the Pro Controller is very comfortable. It is one of the most comfortable controllers I think I've ever held in my life. Like, it's even more comfortable than the Xbox 360 controller, which is saying something. Uh, and I want to respond to Antonio about uh, uh, about the controller thing. If that was the case, then Xbox and PlayStation 4 shouldn't be having the same controllers that they have for the last two systems. You know, Sony has never ev- really hasn't evolved their style of controller. And I think ever since the Xbox 360, Microsoft haven't evolved their controller that much. They did little touches, but haven't evolved it. Nintendo is known to make different kind of controllers that's going to fit comfortable when you play a game. Now, the Joy-Cons, yes, they are a little bit small, uh, but you have other options to play that comes with the system to uh, to have a better experience for it. So if you want, if, I mean, you don't have to, and I was and sorry that it hurts your hands and your fingers, but there are options that you could save up and get a pro controller, or you could use, or you could just keep it, the, those controllers on the system and play it on with the uh, Joy Cons attached to the system. Now it depends on what game that you are playing and the lift of time that you are playing. So um, if 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 it's just the Joy Cons that kind of have a problem after a time, maybe you know put them, let them recharge, and rest your hands. Um, that 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 was that would be something that I would do, um, but I if, think that, sorry but, sorry to interrupt, but I think the thing that like the Joy Cons do uh kind of I don't want to say poorly, but they do have that they do have the face buttons and the makeshift uh not D pad I don't even know what to call it the the black C buttons I guess yeah from N sixty four like. <laughs> They do, they do put them right under the joysticks, which makes it very uncomfortable. And right above, especially the face buttons, the A B X Y face buttons are right above that right uh, stick. And if you're playing, I I do wish they would have made the uh, Joy-Con grip m- at more of an angle instead of a. Uh, rectangle in the middle because like if you look at the joy con grip it's it's it it makes the joy con straight and if they would have just angled it in a little bit uh-huh. i feel like that would have made all the difference and actually would have made it a lot better to use uh but that said like like i said earlier i i personally don't have problems with it uh except for for mario kart sometimes but at that point, like if I'm playing at home, I'm playing on my TV and I'm playing with the pro controller. So I I don't really have a good answer for you. I do think that companies do need to take more time to learn how to make a comfortable controller at this point. It is 2017. Uh, you know, I I think, you know, the GameCube controller is often referred to as the most comfortable controller. Uh, and I think that the the Switch Pro Controller is is very similar in terms of you know the rounded edges of of the top of the controller uh it is very comfortable i i you know i i think it might be my favorite controller since the gamecube uh wow it's it's very comfortable it's it it's is, really yeah. easy to use it's very comfortable uh i don't know i i think the xbox 360 controller is really comfortable too but uh for some reason like it's not comfortable unless i have the text pa- the text pad attached to it uh-huh. which adds a little bit more weight to the bottom of the controller whereas the the switch pro controller it feels weighted properly at the bottom so i'm mm-hmm. not having that issue uh i i mean i i do see how someone could have an uncomfortable experience by playing for a long time in handheld mode cramped the cramped position of all the buttons and it kind of almost feels on par with a 3ds and if you're not if you don't like the 3ds button positions you're not going to like the joy cons button positions but you have identical but you have the uh the holder for it um the 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 joy grip 
Joy-Con yeah. grip that comes with it. So, I mean, you could mm-hmm. always put it on there, and even that feels comfortable in yeah. my hands. And so, I'm, you know, I'm talking more of like button placement. You know, not not necessarily how you're holding it. I'm talking like, yeah. you know, just having the face buttons above that right joystick is very. It's not very comfortable. I d- I don't think it's very. I don't know. If they would have made the Joy Cons a little bit wider and had them offset a little bit, I think it would have been a little bit better. But uh, I do know I do know what you're saying too. Is like they they it does fit a lot better in the Joy Con comfort grip, and it does that actually feels a lot like the pro controller it's a little it's a little light but like it does function as a normal controller and like you if that's all we had you wouldn't really care you know yes so hope we answered that question (laughs) (laughs) uh well ed what's a what's another question from our facebook group well, our very own uh, Adrian Nieto um, asks, what kind of games do you guys wish to play on Switch? Don't mention specific titles that may or may not come. I'm talking about things like multiplayer or FPS action, etc. So mostly, what kind of genre of games would we like to uh, would we like to play on Switch that we wish to play on Switch? Um so I'm not allowed to say Breath of the Wild too. <laughs> <laughs> no, you cannot. Um, definitely RPGs is going to be a big major factor for me. Um, I would love to play arcade style games and shoot 'em ups. Um, I would love to play games vertically. Uh, on the switch with another friend, or if I'm on the go, I would love to have that arcade style placement to play. Um, some of those old retro style games. Um. Like the the games that came on the main main board and things like that, I would love to play that on Switch. Um, you know, Neo Geo is kind of giving me that feel, even though I don't own the Switch yet. Um, but Neo Geo is giving me that arcade feel that um, f- and for some games that I just never got a chance to play. Uh, so that's what I'm looking forward to. Of course, platformers is a de- is a must. Um, I want more some more beat 'em ups. I need some 2D beat 'em ups. Um, more or less metroidvania games i think i had enough of them to play on other consoles and that's kind of given the indie um any developers like comfort it's like i said last episode a safety net so i would kind of like to see them uh make something different like a blaster master or a top-down zelda style game just something in their own like um Someone should be able to do a Contra or um, do maybe a Ghouls and Ghosts style game. Like I would love to see stuff like that back on it. Um, mm-hmm. There, did you play that uh, uh, Ghouls and Ghosts style game on Xbox on Xbox One? Uh, oh, what's it called? I forget what it's called. But it was like it was like eight dollars, and it it was basically just ghouls and ghosts or ghosts, super ghosts and goblins. It was super good. Uh, uh-uh, I have it. I have to look uh, at it. So Castile, gosh, what is it? Now I gotta look it up. Um, but for me, I really, and I get, and I maybe this isn't answering the question correctly, and I'll have another answer that will answer it. But I can also hear. Todd Oxtra's eyes rolling into the back of his head. I really want a solid virtual console on this thing. And like, I, I really want a, because like I totally skipped virtual console on 3ds and Wii U mm-hmm. because of Wii. So I didn't really feel the need to buy them unless it was one that I really wanted. Like, yeah, I bought super Metroid on 3ds because I wanted that game portably. I bought the Game Boy version of Tetris because that's the only way you could buy. It. That's the only way you could play it on modern systems. But you know, I I want a solid virtual console that I can take with me on this nice, beautiful screen. I can just see Super Nintendo games pop off of that nice yeah. screen. I mean, you, you you know what that screen looks like? Yes. It's just, oh man, if I could just have a almost like a pixel perfect well, mode of of Super Metroid on there or I'm going to answer 
I'm gonna answer your wish, and this was probably going to happen. Uh, you got more thoughts? Go ahead and say, uh, and then I can respond. Uh, I was, I mean, I I really want Virtual Console, but other than that, like, I would like to see Nintendo really experiment with genres that they're not comfortable with, like first person shooter, and like everybody is gonna say, well, Metroid Prime is first person shooter, not really. It was more of a first-person exploration game. Yeah, first-person. I, I, I would not call that a first-person shooter. Uh, I would like them to maybe experiment more with f- franchises that you know step outside the box. Like I could just hear everybody's eyes rolling, but like Star Fox Adventures, like that kind of experiment. Not like, not like Star Fox Adventures, but you know what I'm saying. Like take, uh-huh. take their franchises and put them in genres maybe they don't really belong in. Uh, maybe not Zelda or Mario or something, but like, you know, I I think they could experiment with some of their smaller franchises. Uh, like, you know, Hey, Pikmin is a good example. They're, they're making a 2D side-scrolling platformer out of Pikmin, which is a cool idea. You know, something like that. Uh, Kirby would also be a good candidate for that. You know, maybe not make a 2D side scrolling platformer, but well, they did cool have they they did have that pinball game for Kirby. And mm-hmm. that would actually I feel like that would work yeah. great on Switch. Mm-hmm. That's the but, one of the vertical style games that like play. Mm-hmm. And like I really feel like Nintendo and, and I I don't want them really to do this, but they do have all the right pieces in place for this. If they made either a, a hero shooter, hero combat type game or a MOBA, a Nintendo MOBA, like they do have characters that fit the mold in certain classes and stuff. And, you know, I don't know how that would work exactly. Like if they made an overwatch style game with their heroes, uh, I, I mean, I don't know how that would work, and I don't. I know like that's not anywhere close to being on Nintendo's brain, but I could see them fitting different characters into different classes and maybe doing something like that. And like, part of me says, "Well, Smash Brothers is kind of that for them as like their hero-based fighting game, you know, almost." Yeah. Uh, I don't really know what I want to see from them though, because I'm getting everything from them. I got my strategy RPG with Fire Emblem. Got my JRPG with Xenoblade. I've got, you know, my action adventure with Zelda. You know, platforming, you know, Donkey Kong and Mario are obviously there. Uh, Real time strategy, you got Pikmin. Uh, you know, fun platforming like uh, Yoshi's Woolly World and, and Kirby. Like, it, the only thing that's really missing right now is a Metroid game. Like, we got Star Fox for better or worse on Wii U. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we we've gotten almost everything, and which oh, which brings me to my next point. This is something I wanted to discuss with you on last episode, but I didn't, and this doesn't have anything to do with this question. But I need to say it now that I'm thinking about it. So we got Mario Kart Eight right on Switch, Mario Kart Eight Deluxe. Yes, and people are saying, well, what if we get Mario Kart Nine later down the road? But what if they got Mario Kart out of the way right now because they're developing an F Zero game? I was thinking about that earlier today. Like, but we talked about that though. I, we talked about F Zero coming to coming to Switch because we were talking about. I know. We were I know, but about, this is a very specific thought of like you know we've gotten our Mario Kart this generation already, and if Nintendo's going to release another racer, why don't they do F? Why don't they do F Zero this generation? Because we've already got our Mario Kart. Because they're gonna want Bandai Namco to make the F Zero game. Ah, uh, I wish they would just give it to Sega, kind of. <laughs> well, l- hold that thought, because I'm okay. I'm gonna answer your Virtual Console one first. Okay. People are not going to people are going to grow at, at the American Virtual Console, so to have a better VC experience, it's all going to be imports. 
gays that came from, that gays that's only out in Japan that never came to America, those that's the retro console that you're going to need to get to have a richer experience, whether you like it or not. They they got games that we just never played. Yes, the localization and language barrier is something to you know debate about. But if I could play something from Japan that came on the Famicom that never came to America, or you know the soundtrack was different, and I could actually get a chance to play in that form, that would give me a richer virtual console experience than the American one. As for your F Zero coming to Switch now that Mario Kart Eight Deluxe is kind of out of the way, if they decide to do that, we're going. To, uh, Nintendo will have to study how well fast R R M X has done, which it did is is still popular on the Switch. Now, if that team gets picked up with Nintendo to work on to make an F-Zero game, that would be the F-Zero that everybody wants. Wasn't that because originally, wasn't that team originally pitching that game to Nintendo as an F-Zero game anyway? No, not that I know of. Somebody, somebody was making a game like that and pitched it to Nintendo as a, as a F-Zero game. Not that I know of. They might have been they might have pitched, if they did pitch it as an F-Zero game, I could see that, but uh, only could p- see that they pitched it as an original idea to bring it to the Wii U or bring it to Wii, you know, to bring it as an indie game. That's the only thing I could actually think of. Now, huh. because they have experience in racing game and making a great racing game, if they got blessed with the F-Zero license, that's guaranteed sales, not only for that company, but for Nintendo. Huh. Sega Sega doesn't need it because Sega needs to work on um, their virtual racing series and try to get it, get that on Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, Bandom Nekai, yes, they got the arcade version of, F- I think, F-Zero and um, Mario Kart. They already got that. But Band of Nelka is making probably gonna make something else for Nintendo Switch that's that they want to work on with Nintendo. Um uh, so the the best bet is the developers who made fast uh RMX Neo. They will mm-hmm. be the ones to give them the F Zero license and be like, okay, and not license, but uh IP and be like, okay. Let's see what you guys could do. And then impress Nintendo's whole socks off that Nintendo would be like, okay, now we could go for it. And if, if they show it, and if they show don't show that e- this E3, which I'm fine with, but they do it in a Nintendo Direct this year or next year, it's guaranteed sales. It would be, I think a Nintendo would get a lot of praise for that. Mm-hmm. So... Now, don't get me wrong. I will. I will buy it. I will look forward to F Zero uh, being ready for a Switch, mm-hmm. and then go ahead and do Mario Kart Nine if you want to. But uh, mm-hmm. but that would be the team that I would give that F Zero to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was just that was just the thought I was thinking about earlier. I was like, man, F Zero would well, like it, all it these, has to come. These, it has. I just feel like you know the two games that people are really developing indie games for are Metroid and F zero. And like, those are the two, like besides, you know, platformers, those are the two most popular style indie games we have right now, especially on Wii U and, and switch, you know, like those are the games that are most popular. Like, I don't understand why, if I don't know if Nintendo's like looking at that and saying, okay, we either, they're either saying a, why do we need to develop the games ourselves when we're making money off of these indie games or B they're looking at that and saying, okay, this is what people want. Let's sit down and really make a quality game like these and like which one they're leaning towards. It's just always so. I think because, because of Mario Kart being so popular and make them making them more money. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, it was it was smart releasing Mario Kart out the gate. Yes, like, there's no question. There's no question that releasing you know 
Mario Kart, Zelda, and Splatoon right out of the gate for Switch is definitely the the call to make. Like, there's no question. But I'm, I'm just saying Mario Kart in general has continued to make the money. And mm-hmm. F Zero fell into a niche style of game for mm-hmm. racers and stuff. And not many people have not saying not not enough people have expressed their love for it, but a lot of the purchases haven't been up to snuff. They've been good and people know how great those games are, but they haven't met those same sale expectations like Mario Kart has. And mm-hmm. so they as a bit from businesses, they believe more Mario Kart than F Zero. But Fast Racing Neo has proven that people are willing to get a game like this and even if they slap dash the f0 name on it people will be like okay you guys are working with nintendo i can see some fast racing in your old but you guys introduced some new stuff like people were hyped that captain uh, not captain planet uh captain falcon was in switch yeah. you know People people got super excited to be like, oh my goodness, Nintendo remembers F Zero and all the hype that went around it. So people mm-hmm. want people want him and want his t- game back on the Nintendo platform. Mm-hmm. And like I like playing so much Mario Kart lately. Like I see the care that they put into Mute City in in the F Zero courses. There's yeah, I mean, there's three F Zero courses. Like in that in the carts the carts that look like the f-zero ships like they put so much care into that and if you're gonna put that much care into the mario kart stages looks, imagine how m- no i was just saying it looks beautiful in the lux like racing on yeah. it i'm like oh my goodness this is gorgeous yeah even on the small screen it's like man look yes at, like it's just like the care that they put into that like imagine if they put re- actual like resources behind an f-zero game what they could do like it's just every course in mario kart 8 looks so amazing even on the wii u it looked amazing yes. but now on switch it looks even better man i i just i cannot say enough good things about the quality of Nint- and nintendo especially lately like you know we got a lot of quality early on on wii u like you know the HD remake of of Wind Waker and and Mario Kart Eight and you know later we got Bayonetta Two. I know technically not a Nintendo game, but like you know the quality we got. And then you know towards the end of the generation, we did see it taper off a little bit. Uh, but now to see Nintendo back and putting all their resources behind these monster games like Breath of the yeah. Wild and like retouching up mario kart 8 and splatoon 2 and you know arms like i don't know how that game's gonna play but that game looks looks phenomenal yes uh and mario mario odyssey and xenoblade like i rewatched that xenoblade trailer again man gosh hit that first scene of him running through that that field running towards that town and on the left you see what you think is a mountain until its head moves and you're like holy crap that's a monster and it's taking up the whole screen like I just I can't say enough good positive things about the quality of of what Nintendo's putting their money behind but at the same time like you know Xenoblade is not exactly a flagship series and and you know but they are putting money behind it what if they put money behind F0 now what if they started looking back at their catalog and started if, putting money behind franchises it it, it f0 would have to come out 2018. Mm-hmm. it would it, it would and i don't know it has to be a summer title like f0 needs yeah like like time arms. For like it could f0 could fit so nice in that position where arms is sitting yes. now june july like that that it could sit so nicely in there and nobody like we we look at Nintendo now like look look at what games they're releasing what other companies are releasing games right now none people are starving for things to play and that's why again i think switch is doing so well now too is like mm-hmm. new games to play and nintendo's the only place where you're finding new experiences new right now yeah 
Like, what's the last game Sony put out? Horizon? What's What was their last exclusive? Persona Persona 5? Which yes. is like, okay, yeah, that's I, I understand people like that game, and that's I'm happy for the people that like that game, but like the consistent flow of games is coming to Nintendo. Right. Well, and I don't if well, I was just gonna say if this Nintendo Direct, Direct E3 starts to show off with F Zero, like if they literally start off with F Zero, I don't care if everything else was a letdown or whatever. People will be so happy that they're getting a new F Zero. You know, and people will, and people and stuff like that would be like, okay, Nintendo pretty much, in my case, won for me because I'm getting a game that's been missing for years that I want, wanted to come back. <laughs> you know, uh, IGN or I think Nintendo Life was doing a poll or something. was talking about, uh, um, they're asking people what are what is their greatest tracks in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and if I had to, I, I, you know, all the tracks and stuff look beautiful. After playing that F Zero track, I think that's one of the best tracks in that whole game. Yeah, and if Nintendo could recreate that and show it off at E3, folks would probably be crying again, like they did Metroid and some other games, like. That would start off E3 for Nintendo the right way. Yeah. Yeah, I I I think I think the Nintendo has so much on their plate right now. Yes. With with Switch and you know, I mean still pumping stuff out on 3DS like I I think that maybe pushing this year and early next year. Like I know they have stuff down the line, but I think, you know, them focusing on just, you know, year one is good for them right now. Yes. And maybe, you know, October, November, maybe have a direct that lays out 2018, Uh you know, and maybe we'll see stuff like F zero. Maybe if we don't see Metroid at E3, maybe they'll throw like throw stuff that like you know we're kind of expecting you know yes. lead off with Fire Emblem because we know it's coming. Uh, and then if they're working on something like F Zero or Metroid or something like, but see Metroid and F Zero, the treatment of that will be will be more welcoming and acceptable and grab people's attention and hype and definitely would guarantee Switch sales at E3. A, a, mm-hmm. regular, yeah. a, a regular direct would probably do a little bit of the same thing, but you know the world of gamers are watching. You know some of the retailers mm-hmm. around the world are watching. So if you mm-hmm. want to make well, a big splash and a big impress impression and really get guaranteed reserves uh, or pre sales or and uh, you know f- and guaranteed sales for the system. That would be the time to do it at E3, then a regular Nintendo Direct. Still have your Nintendo Direct, but it has to be the big one of the year, and that's only going to be at E3. Mm-hmm. Yeah, plus another thing, too, on your point of, of major sales coming off that E3 press conference, mm-hmm. let's, let's, let's face it. Like, you know, a lot, of pe- a lot of hardcore Nintendo fans jumped on Switch at the beginning, but a lot didn't because... You can play Breath of the Wild on Wii U. You can play Mario Kart 8 on your Wii U. You can still play Splatoon 1 on Wii U. Like, you know, their major tires that they're pushing for the Switch, I think, are intended to push people to buy a Switch that didn't own a Wii U. Right. Uh, you know, there there are the hardcore that did buy it as well on top of the Wii U. But, like, you know, a lot of people that bought Switches didn't own a Wii U. And I think that initial push of Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8, Splatoon 2 is to get those people on board. And then the people that are looking for new experiences go, okay, Mario Odyssey is coming. coming. Uh, you know, Fire Emblem Warriors is coming. Like maybe that's when I'll jump on the Switch wagon. And then at E3, you'll say, okay, here's your F Zero, here's your Metroid, here's your uh, Mario Rabbids. <laughs> crossover game that i don't think anybody really wants <laughs> but you know you know what i'm saying like the the stuff that you you are expecting down the road 
you know, will be at E3. Yeah. And that's well, where you get people to buy it. It's like the promise of these new titles. Well, uh, the thing with Switch, with, you know, people who, who didn't own a Wii U getting a getting Switch, um, I'm not going to even bring up third party about this. Um, some people just said that, well, they don't got the games that are for me. I feel like the Switch has that those games for them. Well, you already own, if you own the other two consoles, look at your library. Is your library big enough? Mm-hmm. And if not, you would literally be surprised if you ask Wii U owners how big their library is and what games that they got. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and, I mean, I, I I look at my I look at my Wii U collection. Yeah, the Wii U isn't exactly the strongest Nintendo console in terms of games, but I probably have close to sixty games for my Wii U, and they're all like fantastic. And there are some third party games in there, but there's also a lot of indies that got physical releases. Like right. next month, like this month, this month, I'm looking forward to Darksiders and Axiom Verge on my Wii U as physical, you know, like right. it's, it's, it's all about if you're willing to put the time in and dedicate yourself to an ecosystem. I mean, like, you know, Nintendo is a very different beast than PlayStation and Xbox. We've said that a million times, and it's been right. said over the last 15 years now, you know, 20 years even, if you go back to N64. Like, I love my Wii U. I think a lot of people are going to look at it just as fondly as people look back at the GameCube 10, 15 years from now. Like, I've, and, we've we've said that multiple times on this show. And I think that some gamers who didn't play Wii U who missed out on that quality i think they were i think some people were blinded by the numbers and what wasn't coming to their systems over the quality of the games that were on that system and i think some people would have enjoyed the games that did come out on the system and would probably in my opinion would say why can i not experience get the same feeling of fun or the same experience on my other consoles and a lot of people don't analyze systems like that or in, in the games that they choose to play and, and and enjoy like a lot of people just sometimes don't think about that but if they did they would see that you know and you look at the games that's on that system you would have been like okay now i understand why nintendo makes the games that they make and why i feel like the other developers should put their product on the system. Now, Nintendo mm-hmm. Switch. Now, Nintendo Switch now is not only bringing those Nintendo followers and new fans and people who are saying, "Well, Nintendo finally caught up to." No, Nintendo never needed to catch up. Everybody else needed to catch up with Nintendo, and still to this day, still need to catch up with Nintendo because. Mm-hmm when your game or your system does good at one part of the month and yes playstation 4 somehow continues to sell well that's good and fine that's good and dandy but it takes a long time to sell a system like playstation 4 and like xbox one you can flood stores as much as you can with them but i think like pretty much after after January, that following year, that PlayStation Four and Xbox came, and Xbox One came out. Nobody was touching the system. The the sales of it slowly went down. Um, mm-hmm. with Switch and stuff, yeah, it is limited. But I think even if you full get full, uh, with a whole bunch of Switches, they're going to continue to sell out. Not because mm-hmm. it's the hottest thing. It's because it's doing something different. Whether you want to see it as a portable console or you want to see it, see it as a, your uh, main console at home with the TV, it's going to offer you something different that Sony and Microsoft is not willing to take. You want innovation. You want new games. You want something new in video games. Nintendo is the only company that's going to do it. Sony and Microsoft is never going to give you that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, 
man, I just, I'm really sad that a lot of people didn't buy the Wii U. Like, it just makes me sad. I mean, and, and people have their reasons of not buying the Wii U, but there's always something about Nintendo that you have a regret. Nobody really don't have any regrets when it comes to Xbox and Sony. When the mm-hmm. PlayStation brand, people don't have re- regrets of not playing games on that system. Nintendo, on the otherwise, people always have some form of regret and always say, "I wish I played that game. I wish that I played that game." And there's more people who say, "I wish I played that game on a Nintendo console" than they do on the other systems. Because mm-hmm. guess yeah, what? And- even if you, even if you don't own the other systems, you played that game somehow on PC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus, like, we had this discussion earlier uh, today, and I was like, look, I really don't know what's coming out this fall that I'm really excited for, except for, you know, I will play Destiny because my friends play Destiny, and I will get back into that habit. But, like, mm-hmm. and, and, like, if, you know, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is finally announced this year, like, I will definitely play through that because I think that series is amazing. But other than that, like nothing else that's coming out this fall, I'm really like gung ho about being a day one supporter of if I get them at all, except for what's coming to Switch. Like I'm really interested in Fire Emblem. I'm really interested in Xenoblade. I'm really interested in Odyssey. I'm really right. interested in, you know, a Pokemon Stars update if that's really coming and you know the rumor the rumor is pick the big rumor right now too now is pikmin world which is you know pikmin 4 is coming to switch at some point this year like those are the games that i'm excited for and for me the game that i'm excited for playstation 4 is detroit become human for xbox it's cuphead what does the other two what else in the library that's going to excite me the last of us 2 no, because The Last of Us didn't even excite me for the first game. It's so pain by the numbers. Scorpio, yeah. not really, because not only do you have you not shown off the system, what exclusive games is going to be worth playing on it? You talk about power yeah. and how your games are going to look, but you're not telling me anything that's going to make me excited to get it. The reason mm-hmm. I got it in your Xbox yeah, One was Ori and the Blind Forest because of that art style. The reason why I got a PlayStation 4 was because of The Last Guardian. Mm-hmm. And those games are already yeah. out and I'm enjoying it. Yeah, and the and the thing is, like, we've had this discussion before too, and like I know we're super off topic, but like everything for let's I mean, everything that Xbox has put out lately is either, you know, it's either a new Forza game or you're shooting something and like I don't always want to be shooting something and then you get the PlayStation side and like everything is a third person over the shoulder either it's either Uncharted style or you know because Uncharted, Last of Us uh, even Horizon to an extent all all fit into that mold or like you know and, and they're even putting stuff like God of War into that mold too like yeah over the shoulder we're gonna try to tell tell a uh compelling story which like the the most compelling game sony's put out this generation for me at least was infamous like i've said that already like i don't i didn't think i'm sorry i didn't think uncharted was that great and like the last of us is not my type of game like i don't want to be sad like I'm, I'm playing a game to get out of the realities of life. And like, sometimes life sucks and I don't want to be in a world that sucks. Like, you know, not, not that the last of us was a bad game. It just wasn't for me. And I don't want to be sad in the games that I'm playing. Whereas, you know, <laughs> I, this, and I, I know I'm all gung ho on switch and Nintendo right now, which, you know, I have been, for since the eighties, like that's, I'm sorry, but like playing Zelda was awesome. Right. And that world was that, that story in that world was dark without was dark without trying to be dark. You know, it just, it just had that story to it. And like, I don't know. 
I just I feel like everything on Xbox and PlayStation is moving into a direction that's aimed for a specific audience and not the variety that I'm getting with Nintendo. I right. guess is what I'm saying. And you could say that well, Nintendo don't make the games like Sony and Xbox can make. Well, yeah, N- Nintendo doesn't have to because I bet you if I put a game on if I put a game from Nintendo versus the other company, I bet you you will have more memories playing a Nintendo game than playing anything on the other two platforms with their game. Can anyone remember the story of of Gears of War four? Pretty much not. Can you do you can you remember the story for um Horizon? Maybe because it's a hot new title. And but you know, can you remember what you did? For Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, pretty much, yeah. And you could, and from your one experience of Breath of the Wild, there's many more that's in that game that you could talk about mm-hmm. with this, with no, with knowing how basic the story is. But you could always be like, these characters are interesting, and actually finding out the story is easy to remember. Mm-hmm. So Nintendo don't have to make the games like Sony and Xbox. I, I would like, I would love to see Sony and Microsoft make a make a Nintendo style game. Mm-hmm. Now, the which last is, Guardian, which is like, which is like, uh, by the time this comes out, this episode of Podcast Unlocked was really is already like a week old. But I really suggest you go back and listen to it a little bit. They were talking about the directions that Fable could go, and they mm-hmm. were they were talking about Breath of the Wild in terms of building an open world that is interesting, that is stylish, that has a sense of humor, but also telling a compelling story that lets you kind of do whatever you want. And then, you know, you sprinkle in the British humor that's always been a part of Fable. You sprinkle in the morality system that's always been a part of Fable. And that's how you make that game compelling again. And like, I would I would love to see Microsoft say, look, Scorpio's flagship title, Fable. Here it is. Like, I would love that. That would make Xbox's conference way more compelling to me than yes. them showing up crackdown again. Them showing, you know, I'm sure if Tomb Raider's announced, it'll be on the Microsoft stage. Them showing Halo again. Like, as much as I enjoy Gears and Halo. Like, I would love them to come out and say, look, here's Fable, and this is what we're doing with the franchise. You know, I would I would love that. And I, I really do to that podcast unlocked episode because it was it was really that 20 minutes was really awesome. Uh them finally saying, look, Fable needs to come back, and them comparing a Fable style game to Zelda was like I got excited just listening to them talk about it. Well, it's a lot of open world games that's going to get compared to Breath of the Wild because that that's how influential Breath of the Wild is. So, but Corey, let's go on to the next question. You you got (laughs) one? I know. I'm sorry. I was just (laughs) to have it. Um. All right. So the next, and I would say that, and I would say this, Corey. Let's let's hold that discussion for another episode. Maybe next episode. Well, we'll, maybe we could have that fabled discussion the week before E3. Yes. So let's put a yes. pin in that. Uh, okay, so our next question comes from your partner in crime on World 1-1, One One, Larry Giver. Uh, you have five ports or remasters from other systems or generations on Switch, and then no more remasters ever. What are your five? And they can either be Nintendo remasters or other. Remasters. Ooh, okay. Wow. Um, um, I could go first. Uh, definitely Devil May Cry DMC. I would love mm-hmm. that to be on Switch, that, the remaster one. Uh, that Turbo, I, was I think. To, which is... I was about to say that too. <laughs> <laughs> that one. Um, we're already getting the secret of mana remaster, so I won't add, I, I really won't add that. But I would like to see Pippa Mario a thousand year Thor. I would love to see that as a remaster to be on Switch. Um, 
uh, Ikaruga or some kind of treasure collection. Uh, I'd love to see that get remastered and be put on Switch. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, man. Two, uh, two other ones that I would love to see remastered. Um, None of the Mega Man games. I I haven't had enough. Oh, Simon's Qu- Castlevania for two. Simon's Quest, like I said earlier in the show. <laughs> I would love for that to get remastered and be on Switch. Uh, that's four. Um, I would actually love the the original Tomb Raider, like the very first Tomb Raider, to be redone, remastered, and put on Switch. If I cannot get that, um, uh. Um, Leg- the Legacy of Kane sequel that came out um, with uh, Ezio or something like that. I had to look it up, uh, but it was a it, it was a PlayStation Two Dreamcast um, game that actually came out. Uh, Are you talking about Soul Reaver? Soul Reaver, yes. I would yeah. love to see that get remastered and be on Switch. Mm. Yes. Oh man. Uh well you said DMC, so I'm not gonna take that one. Um the one game I would like to see on Switch remastered and totally done in probably the Mario Odyssey style graphics would be Mario sixty four. Yeah. I can see just because I've been thinking about that game a lot lately after playing Breath of the Wild, just because Breath of the Wild gave me that same feeling that Mario sixty four did when I got my N64. Uh, so I would like to see a full-on remaster of Super Mario 64. Would you want it in the, the Galaxy style? Or Odyssey style? <sighs> or a 3D I mean, world? I don't know. I It mm, probably doesn't matter. I mean, Mario looks... Mario is Mario at this point. Uh, probably... Okay. I do like the 3D world uh, style and graphics, though. Oh, man, that to make it so cleaner good. and make it pop. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I would like a full remake, remaster of that. Like, man, man, that's all I want. Uh, <laughs> where's my N64? I want to play some Mario 64. Um, I guess I have it on my Wii U. Uh, let's see. I would like to see Rise of the Tomb Raider come to Switch. Uh, just because I want that series on Switch really bad. Um man what else do i want um i would like to see uh that beyond good and evil hd come to switch uh though i i don't care if they totally remake it but i would like to at least the xbox live hd remake come to Uh. to switch um man so that's three hmm i would trying to pick ones that wouldn't be like super obvious because i would love to see a remaster of super metroid but like in 3d like a new like new super mario brothers but for the metroid but i don't i, I would don't say use that as a pick i would say metroid zero yeah that game mm-hmm. boy Advance one to get mm-hmm. remastered. yeah um man shoot what else would i want ports in terms of ports. Um I would like to see man, I don't I don't want to say anything that I think a sequel would get announced and then eventually come to Switch. Like I want to say Bayonetta 2, but I still am hoping that it's Bayonetta okay. 3 is is coming. Because like man, there's so many signs that are coming to that. <laughs> You just right ready now. to get, get you literally ready to get giddy and get happy. Oh, I know, gosh, Bayonetta two so good. Um, and I don't really think we need anything from Wii U ported over, just because that system's still so recent and like, yeah, still like I, those games are still totally playable with the Pro Controller if you're annoyed by the gamepad. Like, there's only probably like three or four games that really need the gamepad. But uh, <sighs> shoot, man. Um, man, probably can't do collections either, can we? He, he you, you can. I did. 
Uh, I mean, you could yeah, because I said the tre- a treasure collection, like getting yeah. all of those games remastered and being put on Switch. Yeah, I would like to see the Mass Effect trilogy get ported over. Yes, because uh, I I I still really love Mass Effect one and two a lot, and and three. Uh, although three is the only one I didn't play through more than once. Mm. So I would really like that. I really think that game would fits a portable style too, just because like, especially Mass Effect 2, the the loyalty missions, they're not that long, but they're still interesting and they're good for like a a 30 to 40 minute play session. Yes. Um, so I get one more, huh? Yeah, we master one we master one to put like three's gameplay in it. Like take that broken. Yeah, that's the thing. I if they ever did a, an HD remaster of the Mass Effect trilogy. I would really hope they would go in and like fix the gameplay of one, but fixing fixing yes. the gameplay of one would like you would totally just have to overhaul that whole game because like the how you level your character up and the armor and weapons you pick all revolve around that crappy gameplay. Like they all revolve around that crappy gameplay. And, like <sighs> I don't know. So. Man. so- garbage um, yeah dude i have you tried to play mass effect one lately yes uh so garbage oh oh got it a rogue squadron collection or if you can't give me all three just give me rogue squadron two yes yes an, H- an hd version of Rogue Squadron 2. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I was looking at, I was looking at my GameCube games. I was like, man, what games from that era do I really want? <laughs> cuz see, cuz I I would I was going to go with Eternal Darkness, but I just I said that too many well, times. I I think another thing about Eternal Darkness too is like that game especially in an HD era is really starting to show its age. Like not from like a graphical perspective, but like uh-huh. the way it messes with like the volume on your TV and stuff. Like nobody has that. Like it used to be universal that that stupid green bar goes across your TV and turns up your TV, and then that's that's like that's how that game gets you. But like, yeah. and you couldn't now and you it's couldn't do like, the uh, erase the memory mm-hmm. card thing. You can't do that. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So yeah, Rogue Squadron Two. I would really like it. A remake of yeah i i wonder i wonder if and this this i wonder if ea is really like playing with a, a rogue squadron idea no it's so focused on battlefield and the the action story game by that one lady who left um naughty dog like uh, come on really and uh yeah man man that just think Man, that that those two Rogue Squadron games that were in development for Wii and Xbox 360 are just laying somewhere. They're yes. just laying somewhere untouched. Man, remember uh man, they were he was on NBC, right? That uh yeah. That got uh and they were talking about the Wii version and then the Xbox 360 online multiplayer version of Rogue Squadron. Oh man, that that would have been cool. But <sighs> anyways, Ed, what's our next question? Well, our last question, uh, it comes from our very own NGR co-host, Todd Oxtra. He asks, what Nintendo franchise is overrated? Overrated? And <laughs> Corey kind of had to help him. <laughs> he mm-hmm. said overrated. Oh, underrated. So, um, what Nintendo franchise is mm. overrated and which one is underrated? Pick one. Yes. Um, overrated. Underrated for me is uh, is F Zero. Mm. And uh, overrated, overrated is. I hate overrated. <laughs> oh man. Overrated, I feel that I think Star Fox might be the most overrated Nintendo franchise. I was, 
I would say Kirby is the most overrated. No, I don't think anybody really rates Kirby games that high, though. I don't think anybody has like, oh man, I cannot wait for the next Kirby game. Like, I don't think anybody's but really. But it sells. It it continues continuously to sell a lot, but a lot of it. Yeah, but it sells really well. Changed. It sells well. It sells well because parents are looking for things for their kids to. Yeah, uh, but it's just it. and it's not like it's not like you and me are out there buying the next Kirby game like I mean we are but we're not like right. Um we're not holding it up there with like Mario and Metroid and Zelda. Right. You know. I mean I but, do I do feel that people have are holding Star Fox up there with Metroid and Zelda. Well, I think Star Fox earned it to you know? be to be that high i think with kirby and no disrespect to kirby or anything um because yeah it does sell well but it's just to me i it, it's something that i don't understand why it's popular mm -hmm. I, I i feel like it's just i feel like when you own a kirby game it's kind of it feels still basic like nothing about it, I don't know. Nothing about it just excite me, but it excites other people, you mm -hmm. know. Um, maybe and maybe Animal Crossing, maybe underrated or probably overrated or even both. Yeah, I think Animal Crossing is a little overrated for me, at least. Yeah. Um, I think Pikmin is a good candidate for underrated. I, I I don't think that game gets enough love, and I think those games are very, very pretty and very very complex. Like they look simple on the outside, but I mean it's traditional Nintendo. It's very simple to understand, but very complex to master. And I think Pikmin is super underrated. And I'm I'm really happy we got Pikmin three on Wii U, and I'm really glad that yes, it seems like we're gonna get Pikmin four on Switch, like. I, I really believe that we're going to get Pikmin on Switch, and I'm really excited for that. Still the only game that I really think that the Wii Remote and Nunchuck worked the best on was Pikmin 3. It was the only way you could run and throw your Pikmin at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. It is true. I mean, that's that was the game I was most excited to use my Remote and Nunchuck for. Had the gamepad on my lap for the map and then just use the Wii Remote Nunchuck to run around. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I do have one more question from from my side of things. Uh, okay. So where is it? Let me find it. Uh, James Flaherty. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. I'm bad at names. Uh, I'm sorry. I really am. Uh, what is what's your most anticipated game coming to Switch? Also, what was your first Nintendo system? Uh, well, I'll answer that second part first. My first Nintendo system was a Game Boy, and I got Tetris, Boxing, uh, Fall of the Foot Clan, which was the Ninja Turtles game for Game Boy. And later on, I got Super Mario Land and uh, Link's Awakening, which were the greatest experiences of my life. So that's that first question. And then my cousin gave me, ended up giving me his NES when he got a Sega Genesis. And that's kind of how it went from there. Okay. Um, my most anticipated game for Switch is Xenoblade 2. My first Nintendo system is. Uh, the NES, the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, I did, though, play Mario Brothers on the Atari. I did own that game. So I did mm -hmm. play the first Nintendo game actually on the Atari. Yeah. I uh, My first Nintendo game was was Donkey Kong. <laughs> and, oh, mine uh, was uh, Super Mario Brothers. And the uh, Duck. I did... Uh, my dad brought home an Atari and uh, he brought home Kaboom, Donkey Kong, and I forget what the third game was. Um, I think it was Commando. 
I'm not 100% sure. And then later on, we got Pac-Man. But my first Nintendo experience was Donkey Kong on Atari. And then, uh, you know, later on, I got it. NES and a Game Boy, and then it just kind of grew from there. So I actually didn't own a Super Nintendo, though, until after N64 came out. Uh-huh. So that was a fun. That was fun. But my my friend Brian always had Super Nintendo. So like I would go over there and play Super Nintendo, and he'd come over and play Genesis. And <laughs> man, I'm, I'm I I clearly made the wrong decision. I'm sorry. Like <laughs> so, like Sonic One and, and Fantasy Star are, are fun, but man, it's no Super Mario Brothers. I'm sorry. Actually, uh, uh, Turbo, I'm sorry. I was about to sneeze. TurboGrafx-16 was my first non Nintendo system. Ooh, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, TurboGrafx-16 was my first non Nintendo system. Um, the actually first console that I bought myself was a Dreamcast. And the first Nintendo system that I brought myself was the GameCube. Nice. Nice. Uh, I got a GameCube for my birthday the, the week it came out, and I was so excited. Um, let's see. Most anticipated Switch game that's been announced, either Xenoblade Chronicles 2 or Fire Emblem. Um. But that's not announced is definitely a potential Metroid game. I mean, that's it's going to be my answer until it comes out. <laughs> but uh, until then, <laughs> until then, Xenoblade Two, I'm I'm pretty excited for. Yes, uh, I've watched I've watched that trailer probably thirty times. Yes, it's, it's it's real good. So I mean, I'm, I'm um, everything on Switch. I want. I'm anticipating. I know. Uh-huh. I know. I'm. I every time a, a Nintendo first party game gets announced, I don't care what it is. I'm pre ordering it and I'm buying it. Uh, and then the indies and the third party games that interest me, I will get on Switch for sure yeah. if it's available there. Uh, but you know, Nintendo, I'm. I got to try to get every first party game for Switch. Like I just, I just have to try. You know. So. Well. That about does it for all of our questions and our episode. Uh, next week, we'll be on a regular schedule, uh, Tuesday, Friday episode. This is just the episode to get you through the week and to, you know, me being on vacation and stuff. I wanted to at least get an episode up for everyone. And yes. uh, I thought it was a good episode. Yes, it was. So, um, Ed, I love you. I love this you was, too. This I, this is my favorite. This is the highlight of my week talking Nintendo twice a week with you. It's just, it's the best. Yay. It's definitely, definitely the best. So, Yay. but I guess we'll, I guess we'll wrap it up. Sadly, I could talk way more, but A, I'm tired. B, you have to go and C, I can barely talk now because we've been talking so long. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, but, Ed, where can we find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at that pressure code. You can hear my podcast, Optional Opinion, at SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, and other podcast apps like the anomalous radio network.podbean.com. Um, you can find my other podcasts that I do with Larry Gifford and Adrian Nieto. And once again, thank you everybody for sending in your questions. But uh, World One One podcast you can find on shoutengine.com. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and you can um read one of my would you read my blog so NGR Radio. I have my Legend of Zelda thoughts up so you guys can check that out. Yeah. Um actually, yeah, by the time this episode goes up, uh Ed and Larry were both on NGR too. So if you want a mini preview of a World One One episode. <laughs> well but definitely go listen to world one one uh you can find me at Corey hudson and hd on twitter Corey and hd on instagram you can find all of our content on our youtube page uh under ngr radio and on ngrradio.com uh hopefully i'll have some reviews by the time this episode goes up of zelda and mario kart and mr shifty and i'm it's a lot so uh a lot's coming ed and i are planning some stuff when i get back i'm really excited i'm really excited about yes 
everything that's happening, Ed. I really am. So, Dude, uh, like literally, I'm gearing up for E3. Like I'm literally starting to plan stuff for E3, and it's crazy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and let's see what else. You can join our Facebook groups. Uh, you know, you can join Ed's World One One Facebook group. You can join our Nintendo Power Block Facebook group, NGR Radio Facebook group. Uh, let's see what else. Is that it? I think that's it. That's it. That's it. Thank you so much for watching, and until next week. We love Bye, you. everybody. We love you. Peace.